All right, so uh, my name is Angelo Farrow, and I manage developer relations for Unity Analytics. And today I'm going to show you how easy it is to set up IAP in your Unity game with Unity IAP. So why are we doing this? All right, so one of our goals is, as Unity is to enable developer success. If you're a successful developer, chances are you're earning revenue, and that means you can build more great games. And so if you're a mobile developer, there's three main ways that you can earn revenue. You can sell your game as a premium app, you can monetize your game with ads, or you can monetize your game with in-app purchases or IAP. And so this presentation, I'm focusing on the third part, which is IAP. And so um, traditionally, here's an example of how you would uh, build IAP yourself if you're a game developer. So first, you build your game. You decide which products you want to sell, and you build a store UI. And if you want to build for Apple, you read through all their documentation. You figure out all the processes that you have to kind of um, fill out in order to get IAP working for Apple. And then if you develop for Google Play, it's a whole other set of code and of documentation that you have to wade through in order to understand what you have to do in order to get IAP working. And then if you add another platform on top of that, um, it starts to look, frankly, like a mess. And so um, the main takeaway from the spider web is that it's already a huge time sunk, and it's already a huge developer effort to get IAP working for one platform, let alone multiple platforms. And so um, that's why we built Unity IAP. So Unity IAP was introduced in the engine, beginning with Unity 5.3. And just like the Unity engine, uh, you can write once and deploy to multiple stores. And so the platforms that we support currently today are the Apple, Mac, and iOS stores, uh, Google Play, and the Windows stores, with more platforms coming soon. And the IAP types that we support today include consumable items, so things like in-game currency, so gold and gems, um, non-consumable items, such as new characters, and subscription items, so season pass or um, uh, new level packs. And so um, let me show you now how easy it is to implement your game with IAP. OK. Hope this works. All right, so here's the game. It's called Movie Dude. And um, this is on Unity 5.3. And so before we set up the IAP, I'm going to show you how this game plays. So, um, and I'm going to select this dude. And the object of this game is to collect as many gold coins as you can while avoiding bombs. And then if you hit a bomb, you die. Um, that's really sad. Uh, but you're given these options when you die. There's, you can watch an ad, um, there's every play, and we have a section for IAP. So here we have the IAP that we decided we want to implement for this game. And so we have two types. You can buy 100 coins, which is a consumable item, or you can buy a new hero, which is a grandma, which is a non-consumable item. And so um, we have the buttons and we have the products in the UI set, but we haven't uh, set up the IAP to work. And so let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to get out of play mode. Um, so in order to enable IAP, uh, the first thing you need to do is that you'll need to navigate to the services window. This is in 5.3. Um, it's right by the inspector, and then you can click on the cloud, and that'll show you where it is um, if you ever need to find it. And so ads and analytics is already enabled, and IAP is already enabled as well. So pretend this wasn't enabled. You just click on IAP. IAP and then here um, is where you get to import the different store packages. And so um, one thing I want to know about, this, about the fact that the packages exist outside of the main Unity engine is that allows us as Unity to be really flexible. So as an example, let's say that uh, Google Play updates how they, their documentation or their policies for a certain store. Um, it's on us as Unity to make sure that we keep on track of all the different policies of all the major billing providers. And so you guys don't have to worry about it. If there's a big change, what we'll do is we'll update the package, and then you can just import the new packages in your all set. Uh, what that also means is that when we launch support for additional platforms, um, you don't have to necessarily be on the latest version of Unity. If you have a stable version of Unity that you want to stick on, you can stay on that and then just import the packages. You'll always have the latest support for the latest stores and any uh, platforms that we support. So now that we've, um, let's go back here. So now that we've, uh, enabled IAP and that we've imported the packages, um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a script. And so there is a little bit of coding involved, but it's nowhere near as much as, it, um, as if you were doing this on your own. And so this is a purchaser script. It's a C-sharp script. And in the script, we're going to go through all the five steps that you need in order to activate uh, the IAP API. And so I'm just going to go through this at a fairly high level. Um, on the website and unity3d.com manual, we have more detailed uh, code snippets that you can look at. Um, we also have a tutorial that walks you step by step through each um, section for how to enable IAP. And we also have a dedicated forum. And so you can post there if you have any questions. We monitor that every day. 
Uh, so the first thing you're going to do here at step one is you're going to add your product identifiers. And so here in lines 35 and, lines 35 and 36, we're adding a K product ID for consumable and a K product ID for non-consumable. And so you're going to hear me say these words consumable and non-consumable a lot in this presentation. Um, and down here, we see the Apple and Google Play equivalents. And so what Unity IP will do is that it will convert the product identifier that we list here to the appropriate identifier for the appropriate store. So what that means is that if I'm on iOS, I'm playing on my iPhone, and if I purchase a, no a consumable item, then Unity IEP will um, convert this string into the Apple ID string. And so there is some work that you have to do. You'll have to go to the iTunes Connect store or the Google Developer Console in order to set the product IDs. Um, but we also have, we basically built out store guides. And so there's step-by-step -step instructions for how you can set up IEP for the different platforms. So now that we've added our product identifiers, um, in this example, we have consumable, non-consumable, and subscription. But for this game, we're only going to focus on the first two. Um, the next thing we're going to do is step two. So we're going to create a builder. And what that does is we're basically telling Unity which products we want to add to our catalog. And so here we have some code that says we're going to add the product for the non-consumable. And we're going to also add another product for the consumable. So step three is we're going to instantiate Unity IAP. Just, just telling it to turn on. And then step four, now that we've added our products, we have our builder, and we've turned Unity purchasing on, or Unity IP on, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a, uh, these products available for people to actually purchase. And we're going to do that by using the uh, buy product ID function. And the product ID is passed as a parameter. So here is a function buy consumable. And then the product ID is going to be k product ID consumable. Same goes for the non-consumable, product ID non-consumable. And then um, scrolling down a bit. So last but certainly not least, um, we're also going to include some code to tell us whether or not we completed this uh, purchase correctly. And so here we have a debug log that says um, if the consumable purchase is a success, we'll see the process purchase pass flag or message in the console. Same goes for non-consumable purchases. And then um, we also have a purchase failure um, logic that'll tell us if the purchase doesn't go through. So that's our purchaser script. And so we've enabled IAP, we've imported the store packages, we have a purchase script. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to um, attach it to uh, the grandma buy buttons and the 100 coins buy buttons. So here I have the IAP panel purchaser. This is our game object. And in this game object, I have the purchaser script attached. And so I'm going to go to the grandma buy button. And down here, I'm going to add the IAP panel purchaser to here. And then the function I'm going to select is purchaser by non-consumable. And then for the 100 coins, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag over the IAP panel purchaser. And then the function is going to be purchaser by consumable. All right, so let's play our game again. Selecting movie dude. I'm trying to get hit by a bomb. Uh, there we go. <laughs> so I died, and now I'm back at the IAP selection. And so here, uh, let's test if we can actually get a consumable purchase to work. So I'm going to click Buy. And we got it to work. We know, one of, we know two ways why it worked. First is that we have 100 more coins. And the second is that we can see here in the console log um, that there's a pr process purchase pass for this consumable item. So let's do the same for the non-consumable item. I'm going to clear the log. And I'm going to buy this, the grandma hero. And here, we got the process purchase pass. So I'm going to exit out of the shop, and we start the game. And now I have the option to select the grandma character. So I'm going to select her. She's a lot faster than the dude, uh, but not fast enough to run away from the bombs. Um, and so when I go back to the IAP menu, you can see that the um, option to select the grandma character is no longer available. And that's because it's a non-consumable item. But we can buy as many coins as you want because those are consumable items. And so that's it. Um, that's how you set up IAP in 5.3. And so with, when we launched Unity IP in 5.3, the three things we wanted to focus on, or the key things we wanted to focus on, were the ability to write once and deploy to multiple stores. So right now we support Apple Store, Mac Store, iOS Store. Uh, Google Play and Windows Store with more stores coming soon. And we also wanted to set up basic product buying functionality for the three product types I described, subscription, um, consumable, and non-consumable. 
uh, but we're not stopping there. And beginning with 5.4 and later, um, we're going to basically release a suite of services built on top of the IAP, of, on top of Unity IAP. And so I'm going to switch over to Unity 5.4. This is a 5.4 beta, so I hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> uh, but one feature that I want to preview for you guys today is called the IAP catalog. And so here's our game. It's called Survival Shooter. And what it is is that you are attacked by zombie, I think they're, I don't know what they're called, but there's some sort of zombies. And then you can shoot them with a rifle. And if you enter this green glowing cube, you can um, enter the store and you can purchase different IAP. So you can buy a red laser, which fires a red beam. I'm not very good at this game. Uh, <laughs> and you can also buy a white laser. Uh, and I think I'm going to die soon. All right, so right now the IAP is set at a red laser and a white laser. White laser. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but let's say that you wanted to run a special promotion and have special IAP for your game. So Valentine's Day was just a few days ago, and um, we actually have a Valentine's Day weapon that we can surface um, to your players. And so um, if you didn't use the cloud catalog, one way you'd have to kind of get this new IAP would be to push out an update and then have your users download the Valentine's Day update. But with the cloud catalog, what you can do is basically service this IP through the cloud. And so I'm going to go over here. And so this is the survival shooter IAP demo. And this is the analogs dashboard. And so right now, I'm just going to refresh this. So this feature is actually live. And so if anyone's using Unity IP um, and would like to test this feature out, um, come find me afterwards. I'd be happy to get you early access to this. And so here we have our catalog, and we have two items. So this is the red laser, and this is the white laser. Um, we can edit our catalog. And how we're going to edit it is I'm going to add a new product. And so here's the product identifier. And here's the new product. So I'm adding the product ID and the product name. I'm going to click Save. And then I'm going to go back to my IAP catalog. And now I have three items in my catalog. And so um, you see this option here, Publish Catalog. And it'll prompt this up. Uh, clicking OK will make the current catalog visible to your application. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes, I am sure. And so the catalog is published. And so um, it does take a few minutes before it will load. Um, so what I'm going to do is hop back to the PowerPoint presentation and talk about kind of what's next for Unity IAP while we're waiting for that feature to load. All right, so what's next for Unity IAP? Well, where we eventually see this product going is that we want to give developers a really dynamic store where you can do a lot of cool things, and it's all controllable from a central dashboard. So um, if you've ever seen me present before, I always say that with Unity Analytics, we built that for the developer community. And the same goes for IAP. We're building this for the developer community. So these are features that um, we picked based on the feedback from the community. If we're way off the mark or if there's something that um, we're missing here, if there's, if there's a use case we're not thinking about, please tell us. Because um, at the end of the day, we just want to build a cool product that you guys will actually use. And so the features that are kind of high on our list right now are receipt verification. Um, we've heard from many developers that having inaccurate monetization revenue is a big pain. Um, and it makes it hard for you to make uh, data or data uh, informed decisions. Uh, we also have A-B testing on the roadmap, um, the ability to serve different IAP for different segments. So that's kind of similar to the cloud catalog, except um, we're combining that with segments. So as an example, um, let's say you want to show cheaper IAP for players who just joined your game, and that's a way that you can incentivize them to spend early on. Or if you want to create a dynamic IAP catalog, so let's say that there are certain weapons that are unlocked only after a user has reached a certain level, um, you can create a custom event, and that will basically create a custom segment of users who have reached level 10 or later, and they'd be, they would be able to unlock that IAP. Longer term, we're also looking into things such as game economy management, so being able to look at a macro view of your game, understand things like your soft currency, your um, hard currency, fraud detection, so using kind of machine learning and algorithms to detect fraudulent transactions. And then finally, um, last but not least, ROI and LTV calculations. And so as an example, one of the things we want to build with that is basically having a unified dashboard. So if you're using Unity Ads or any other ads provider, you can see from your players total LTV as a percentage of revenue generated from ads and revenue generated from uh, in-app purchases. And so this last slide here. So IAP is available now. It's completely free to use, and it's available in 5.3. 
we'll have more features in 5.4, such as the IP Cloud Catalog, which I hope will have loaded now. Um, and if you guys are interested in testing that, come find me. I'd be happy to get you beta access. And lastly, um, tell us what you want, and we'll build it. Um, seriously, uh, we look at this website. If you've never been there before, it's called feedback.unity3d.com. You can vote for specific features, and you can vote them up. And our product managers use this um, on a weekly basis to, to determine kind of what goes in our next sprint. And so it's really important that, um, as a community, you guys tell us what you want, because uh, Again, we're here just to build something that is cool and that um, we hope provides value for, to you guys. And so I hope I bought enough time and that my thing will work now. Uh, All right, so I'm going back to Unity. OK, I'm going to press play. OK, it hasn't updated yet. Um, while it's updating, I'd be happy to take any questions, if anyone has any. I don't have a technical background, so I apologize in advance. I'm not able to answer it. But um, I can follow up with the engineers who will know the answer. Um, about the features that you are planning to implement, mm -hmm. do you have some kind of schedule for them? Or they are like um, just uh, you decide what, what the community wants and then introduce yeah. them. So what's the? Um, like the schedule for them? Yeah, so uh, for 5.4, which is launching um, in a couple of months or a couple of weeks, I think the immediate features that we're working on are this IAP catalog, which I hope will load soon because it's really cool when it works. And trust me, it works. <laughs> um, and also receive verification because we've heard from many developers that, again, having inaccurate monetization numbers is a big, um, it's really hard, it makes it really hard for you to make data informed decisions. And so um, I think longer term, we'll probably have a roadmap available on the website. I'll have to check with the PMs on that. I have a question about adding additional uh, stores, additional uh, markets to yeah. the uh, payment, pr as, uh, payment, payment providers. Mm -hmm. uh, are we forced to uh, wait for you guys to add, for example, Amazon or, I don't know, Cafe Bazaar or whatever small market we will want to launch at? Mm -hmm. Do we have to wait for you guys to implement it? Or mm -hmm. is there uh, some API that we can use and add extend your in, uh, your solution with some specific or small markets that we want to publish at? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, so with Amazon, we are working on that. Um, I don't have a specific release date, um, unfortunately, but that's something that we are working on, so we will have support for that platform soon. As far as the smaller platforms, I believe that the API, the documentation is available, and so if it's a smaller store that we probably wouldn't support, just because it's really small. Um, you can take a look at the API, and then I believe it's accessible, and that you should be able to, um, if you're technical enough, I think you can figure it out. I wouldn't be able to do it, but I'm sure you guys could. <laughs> and now, let me go back to this. OK, I'm going to quit Unity, because it crashed. Uh, this is a beta version. It's the feature still in beta. Um, <coughs> Are there any other questions while I... Yeah, so uh, it wasn't clear for me when you add the new items in the IAP catalog here. So oh, when sorry. you add the new items in the IAP catalog, uh -huh. do you have to manually add them to each store or this is done automatically for it's you? It's done automatically. So this is done automatically for you? Yeah. And my next question would be uh, regarding receipt validation. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do receive validations? Let's say you implement the server for receive validation, or we can uh, implement receive validation with our own server, for example. Yeah, so currently with receive ver verification, I'll have to check with the team, but I think we're planning on doing server side receive verification for you. Um, yeah, I'd have to check with the team. I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have the full details on how that's going to be rolled out. But is there, po uh, is there the possibility to, to implement receive validation if we already have if you're our already own? Doing it? Yes. Yeah. Um, with Unity AIP? I, I think so, but I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I can find out for you, though. Okay, let's see if this works. So go back to the store. Yay. And so you can't see it, but here it says the Love Laser. Um, let me see if I can scroll out. Okay, so here's the Valentine's Day IAP, and this shoots a pink laser. So it works, yay. <laughs> um, so this feature is out. If you guys want to test it out and provide us feedback, um, I'd be happy to get you guys access. Cool. Thank you, guys.